that's just how I am. That's just how I think. Have you ever heard people say something like that? That's just how I think. That's just how I am. That's a powerful statement. What someone is saying there is really that they don't want to be responsible. Let me explain. When someone declares, that's just how I think, they're kind of making plain that they have no intention of evaluating their thinking. Or that's just how I am, it means they have no intention of evaluating their behavior and seeking ways to change, if change is appropriate. Now, I've said this before on this channel, I said it often, and I'm going to repeat it. Some people don't want to face things. There are people that don't want to face anything in life. They may adapt externally to get along. When they get older, they get a job, they get a mortgage, so they know how to behave externally. That's what they do. And they think that's development. But the real deal is they don't want to develop. They don't want to give up relief seeking. There are a lot of folks, the only thing they have is relief. The only thing they do is relief seeking. When they get fed up and enforce boundaries and they draw the line and, and, and when they become aggressive like that, it's just aggression to preserve the relief or to extend the relief. They're only in relief seeking. They're really not doing anything else. They don't look at the bigger picture. They don't evaluate circumstances. They don't examine their own expectations. They don't let go of anything. They just don't want to face anything. You have many of such people out there. You probably know some of them. Now, people like that, that don't want to face anything, as I mentioned before, they will comply externally when it's necessary because they need a job to pay the rent and all of that so they will adapt to the external requirements requirements of society and when they do this they feel as if they accomplished something and now they're going to look down others who fail to do so or have trouble doing so and that gives them the narcissistic relief that they are doing the right thing so the, so the only thing they have is the narcissistic relief i'm not saying they're narcissists directly but the only thing they have is narcissistic relief and that's what they don't want to face so this anxiety that they don't want to face, they'll project it onto others. If you, for example, have been without a job for over two years, and now you finally got a job again, and you finally got your new apartment, and you have this um, cousin of yours that keeps saying, well, learn to develop better, learn to become independent, they're kind of treating you as a little kid that needs to grow up. Even though you did have a job before, you just went through a crisis that you didn't know how to manage. And sometimes things happen in life that you don't know what to do about it. It happens. Now, instead of them being glad for you and saying, finally, you succeeded. You got your job again. You got your apartment again. I'm proud of you. Instead of saying that, they have to say something bad about you as if they're the ones training you. Now, what's going on there? That individual has built a negative category in his mind concerning you so that he or she can feel better about him or herself because there are things about him or herself that they don't want to fix. They don't want to face anything in life. So when you went through that dark circumstance, they use the dark circumstance as an excuse to, think to, as an excuse to project their happiness onto you. And they're comfortable in doing so. They have no intention of changing that. But now that your circumstance has changed, they don't want to let go of their decision of seeing you in a bad daylight. But they can't come open and out to you about them seeing you in a bad daylight because then they have to explain it and they can't explain it. So they still try to associate everything that happens to you with a black box they made for you in their mind. Why? Because when you are in the black box, they are relieved because they don't have to look at themselves. Some of such people will even become violent, physically violent towards you when you are succeeding and, they're, and they have no excuse and they can't find any excuse anymore for their black box. Because the moment they can't find any excuse anymore for that black box, the moment they really can't put you in that black box anymore, and they are faced with their own unexamined expectations, they'll lose it. And when they lose it, they'll become violent towards anyone around them. They'll begin to attack anyone. Yes, you have such people. They exist. I'm telling you, evaluate the people you are in contact with. Because it's those that you're in contact with that will, uh, that will affect you. Those Strange down in the streets that may be narcissists. Okay, they're narcissists, but they are not the ones that are going to, that are going to affect you. 
because they're strangers. They may not even know who you are. Okay? So it's less likely that they would take advantage of you or that they would become a danger unto you. But if you have people close to you that don't want to let go of relief seeking, that don't want to grow, that don't want to develop, that don't want to face anything, I'm telling you, even if they're not narcissists, the enemy can use them to snare you. Look, I've encountered many of such people that just don't want to face anything. A lot of them dropped me, threw me away. You know what? I'm happy they did it because that means I don't have to kick them out myself. And some of them, I later heard, heard reports of them. I didn't look for them. Others told me about them, how bad things went with them. Now, I didn't ask for anything to go back with them, but things go wrong with them because they don't want to face anything. And here's the thing, even if you have a job and things go well, you, you have income at the end of the month, that does not guarantee that everything's well with you. There are things you need to face. There are things you need to realize it's not me. That's also a part of facing things. There are times things are going wrong and it's not you. You need to acknowledge it also. Some people think that they need to fix everything that happens to them. That's not true. Your own responsibility is, is to go for safety. Because there are times it's not you. Look, if you have people that keep associating you with something that happened in the past that they didn't like, I'm telling you, such an individual doesn't want to face anything. They're just using some past event as an excuse to project their happiness onto you. Because as long as they can project it onto you and, and transfer it onto you, they don't have to deal with it. And I'm telling you, don't put up with this. Me, if I'm, let's say I'm with relatives or with family or with colleagues, and suddenly someone begins to make negative associations about me, or they make negative, negative suggestions, then I know they're practicing um, suggestive witchcraft. Once I realize that they don't want to change the subject, you know what I do? I politely pick up my stuff and I walk away. That's what I do. Why? I'm not going to confront them because confronting them will lead to fights and in fights they want to prove themselves and that's going to escalate. I'm not into that. I don't take that bait. I just pick up my stuff and I depart from that place. The, the same you should do. Be smart. Walk away. You have folks that really don't want to face anything but they have no escape so all that pain they want to take it out on someone. That's why they go to bars, to clubs, to pubs and all those places. And the reason why they drink so much is that when they act out, they can blame it on them being drunk. You have such folks that, that want to blame it all on drinking. That's why you have a lot of fights in, in clubs, in discotheques, in bars, in pubs, and all of it. Why? Because you have a lot of folks that don't want to face stuff, just want to leave. But they still have that anger, that tension, that sadness, so they want to throw it out somewhere. And when they do it, when they're not sober, they can blame it on the alcohol. Well, in practice, that doesn't work. They can still be fined or they can still go to jail, but they do it anyway. Well, some don't look for alcohol for an excuse. Some will lie about you. Some will make up stuff about you that ain't true. And they will force people to feel sorry and pity for them. You have such folks. Look, it can be that you want to start your own business and you failed in it and you feel very bad about yourself. And others tend to, tend to remind you of your failure of starting your own business. But here's the thing, you made a move. You risked something. You invested in a business. You believed in it. You made business contact. You made your own business card. You learned how to take your own initiative. You learned how to uh, reject rejection because you received no's while, while starting your own business and you, and you learned I don't care about rejection. The re rejection is just a mind construct. You moved on. So you, you've overcome the stronghold of rejection. So you developed a lot when you attempted to start your own business. Men with other folks don't want to go to their jobs. They, they want to do a lot of stuff but they say they're, they are say they're realistic. They have to go to their work every day. Some of them make more money than you. Some of them can save more money than you. Yet, they don't make any move to reach their dreams, neither do they make any move to get the type of outcomes they want. They surrender to their paycheck. They go from paycheck to paycheck. But you, you 
made an effort. You did not give up your job. You went from full-time to part-time for a while, but you still took a risk. You didn't quit your job and, be, uh, and now you have no income. You, did, you didn't act irresponsibly. You didn't act impulsively. You took a risk, a response, you took a responsible risk and you went for it. Those artists didn't. But now, they don't want to face this about themselves. So now, every time they want to feel good about themselves, they can remind themselves that they're not you. That they were not so stupid to try to start their own business while they didn't have any experience. So now they can feel good about themselves. So now they have to keep you in a black box, keep reminding you of it for them to feel good about themselves. But the moment you end up in a far better place than them, because while you attempted your own business and it failed, you, you learned and you take this experience and use it somewhere else, the moment you get further than them, oh dear, now this is going to backfire. Not only did, did they not uh, face themselves, not only did they, did they project their um, anxieties onto you, but now they also have to face the fact that you succeeded. While they thought you were dumb, it won't happen. So now they need to go against their own convictions concerning you and, and, how, and their convi convictions concerning you it's a reflection of how, how they think about themselves, how they relate to themselves. So now they need to examine their own expectations. They don't want to go there. So now they'll turn on you. They don't want anything to do with you. They don't want to hear anything about you. Why? Because it's a confrontation unto themselves. They don't want to face anything. You have a lot of such folks. They don't want to face anything. So don't take it personally when you encounter such people. It's not your fault that they choose to put you in a black box. They did. It's not your fault they don't want to face anything. They don't want someone they don't want to face anything. But here's what you can do and should do. Recognize when you, when you are dealing with such people, lower your contact and walk away. Don't do confronting and all of that. You know why? Because confronting won't help. Those folks have made up their mind that they don't want to face anything. They've made up their mind that it's not their fault. So anytime they encounter difficulties because they don't, they don't want to face certain things that they're going to reject onto someone else. So why would you confront such an individual and risk them using you as an excuse to unleash all their anger? They may get violent, they may want to retaliate, oh no, 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 don't get into all of that. Don't confront such people, do what you have to do. Shake the dust off your feet and move on. When you shake the dust off your feet, you're, you are judging them as unclean and that they're not that they're not safe to be around and you move on your safety matters your life matters that they choose to throw opportunities away but not face anything that's them yes you can motivate people yes you can push people in the right direction and our times you should do that but when someone really doesn't want to face anything learn what you're dealing with because such people can become very dangerous such people when they are stuck and frustrated and they can't relieve themselves, they explode and do outrageous stuff. That's why when Christ removes such people from you, be glad. There, some of you are going through seasons in which you lost everyone. Everyone stopped calling you, everyone stopped contacting you, everyone stopped messaging you. Three quarters of your Facebook list is empty now. And you think, oh dear, why is this happening? Look, you have been, you've been delivered. You've been spared future trouble. And remember what I told you before, when Christ removes five people from you, begin to associate with them, remain active. Because here's the thing, you are active. Those others aren't. They are passive aggressive, but not active. They have a passive attitude, a passive mindset, but they're aggressive in their physical and emotional actions. And because they're aggressive, they think they're, uh, they're, they confuse that with being uh, alive, with being assertive. No, they're passive aggressive, but you are active. And passive, aggress passive aggressive folks often, and I'm saying eventually they'll become obsessive when they are frustrated. When they are frustrated and they can't relieve themselves from the frustration, they become obsessive. And some will become obsessive of you not because they like you, not because they are for you, but because they're upset with you succeeding. You are exceeding their expectations. You are violating their expectations of reality that they don't want to examine. 
So because they can't cancel out or downplay your success or your perseverance, sometimes it's not really your, the outcome that you achieve, sometimes it's your perseverance. Your perseverance in itself uh, can, can cause them to, 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 to view themselves as they really are. They don't want that. So you have some such folks will become compulsive, obsessive towards you, to bring you down. They, they want to know your every move. They begin to stalk you on social media. Um, those folks exist. That's why when Christ removes five people from you, associate with ten others. Remain active. It's not your fault those folks don't want to face anything. And let me repeat it to you. Such folks can become very dangerous. In a, in a blink of an eye. They only have to hear something that upsets them and whoa, you're dealing with a raging beast now. Or, or the demons begin to manifest. So, as I mentioned before in another video, you should recognize narcissistic attitudes and move away from such company. You deserve better. Be at peace.